All right, guys, so we're gonna be doing a whip around inspection today. Um, gonna be going through and basically showing you guys what I'm looking for when you guys do a whip around inspection. Uh, these inspections are very important and it keeps our trucks uh, in tip top shape. So as long as we do these and uh, you know, we'll, we'll all be good. Um, first thing we wanna do is log in. Our uh, username, excuse me, is gonna be junk.driver. Pretty easy, junk period driver. Password is going to be uh, close to the same thing. It's just junk with a capital J, one, two, three. So I'm going to put that in now. All right, so it's going to let me in here, and we're going to um, basically have a list of trucks here, and it's going to have every truck in our system in here. So you're going to find your location where there starts with DM, which is Des Moines, DRs, Grand Rapids, Indy uh, is obviously Indianapolis, and KC, Kansas City, and so forth. Um, so you're going to find one. This one is truck number 29 and we are in Kansas City. Um, so I'm going to go down to truck 29 and I'm going to click start to do this inspection. And the first thing to do is we're, we're going to be looking at the windshield and windscreen, windshield wipers, sun visor, mirror, all that stuff. Um, so I'm just going to go over here. Uh, I'm going to look that the wipers work correctly. Um, step in. I'm going to hit the key in the on position. And I'm going to hit this button. Oh, it looks like they are working perfect. And I'm just holding this button here at the end. And it all looks like there's water coming out. There's not a whole lot of streaks. Um, and it's, it's wiping the windshield very well. Um, so the other things on here to, to check are to make sure that the fluid container is at least half full, uh, just to make sure that you guys aren't gonna run out uh, during a day. So we're gonna get out and I'm gonna go to the other side, I'm gonna show you guys where the windshield washer fluid is. All right guys, so um, this is your windshield washer fluid reservoir. Um, you can look here, uh, it's hard to maybe tell in the video, but it is almost all the way full, if not full, um, which I can't see where there's any, um, fluid that is not there so I would say that that is full if you get anywhere from here down I would say go ahead and add some fluid um, it's not a huge priority but definitely uh, keep your windshield clean when on those dusty days um, one of the other things uh, that we need to check is also the actual windshield itself um, if I go over here and I look um, this windshield is actually in really good shape uh, a lot of you guys know that the windshields uh, break very easily on these things probably every couple months three months we get lucky if we go six months and not have to replace a windshield um, so we just make sure a lot of times that's what one of the things that will fail um, this one's windshield is good so everything on this one passed the wipers the windshield is clean and not cracked uh, and another thing to look at is the wiper blades obviously when i uh, use the wiper blades. Uh, they weren't necessarily they were working fairly well. Um, one of the things that we want to look for is, as this one is, is it's tearing on the end a little bit. Uh, you can see it's not a huge deal until maybe it starts to come off, but it's obviously still wiping the windshield correctly. So um, I'd say I'm going to pass this one uh, for everything with the windshield wipers, uh, the fluid, uh, the, the windshield, everything looks good. Uh, next thing that on the list is lights and indicators. One of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start the truck. The only reason I'm starting the truck is to make sure I don't kill the battery. Um, I'm going to hit my hazard button. And my hazards are going to turn on all my lights. I'm going to go ahead and turn, off, turn on my main lights as well. And we're going to go around and check all the lights on the truck. So. Um, we're going to make sure that they're not, uh, all the lenses are clean, or somewhat clean, and not cracked. Um, so if we look here, these lights are working, headlights are working. Um, look at these top lights, they are working as well. The side lights are working on the front of the vehicle. And now we're going to go around to the side. There's lights on the bed. There and here. We need to make sure those are working. here and at the end here now one thing that we don't necessarily do all the time is check the reverse lights um, you usually have to have somebody to help you because I don't recommend uh, you trying to check the reverse lights and hopping out of the vehicle and while it's rolling back and trying to check the lights it's not a it's not a very task to do and not very smart um, 
So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and pass everything on the lights because it looks like all the lights are working. Check on here is the left wheels and tires. So we're gonna go check on the left side here, which is the driver's side. Um, one of the things I look for are any, you know, tires are correctly inflated, but you don't see that there's maybe losing any air or that they're low. Um, wheel nuts are tight. It's hard to necessarily say that they're tight or not. A lot of times um, they'll just, they're, they are gonna be tight. Uh, the wheels, there's no actual damage that you can see. Right now, this one, it looks like it may have had a little bit of uh, damage on the side here. Somebody had rubbed maybe a, a curb or something. Um, that's not necessarily what we're looking for. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, any damages, so anything protruding out of the tire, out of the top here, um, anything on the sidewall is gonna be, you know, probably wanna get looked at, um, if anything. Uh, what, the, what else here? Um, so yeah, any cuts or bulges, that's that's what I was trying to get at, was any cuts or bulges on the sidewall, uh, and that the tires themselves have decent tread on them. I know uh, sometimes we like to, to go a little bit further than what we like to on, on the tread on tires, but uh, safety is key, uh, and just making sure that the, the tires have enough tread on them is, is gonna be super helpful. Um, so I think that these left wheels and tires here, what I can see are in decent shape. They've got tread on them. I don't see any damage myself. I do in the mornings and I go give every truck just a little kick just to make sure that uh, there are there's air in the tires. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass these ones on the left side. Uh, one of the other things says reflectors, tail lights, and indicators. We already checked all the lights, so we're gonna go ahead and pass on that. Now we're gonna check the right side wheels and tires. So the same thing we did on the left side, I'm just gonna go ahead and check on the right side. So what I'm looking for again is just any bulges, any tears, rips in the sidewall, anything like that. Um, I personally like to look in between the tires because I can tell if it's going to be able to, uh, or if it's gonna be flat, if one's more flat than the other. Um, I feel like it's easier to tell. So these tires, they seem like they're everything is good. They're all up and aired up. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass on that. Uh, next one is doors, seat belts, and safety equipment. So all the doors open and close fully. These ones do. Um, you know, as long as you can close the door, she closes and she opens with ease. We're gonna be good. Uh, fire extinguisher is serviced and ready for use. So a lot of times, um, you guys can come in here and just see that there's a fire extinguisher in here. What I like to do um, is make sure that it is actually full and ready for service. And it's just attached here. You don't have to take it out, but I'm showing just for, for this here. It's in the green and it says full. So we like to make sure that it is full because if a cut fire comes and it's empty, it's not gonna help us very much. And make sure that my seatbelt works, that it latches, and that it's tight. Everything seems to be working as well. Not a very hard thing to do. Um, and then that also the last thing is uh, emergency triangles and paperwork are in truck. So here's a, a top priority for us is that there are emergency triangles and to show where those are, they're in this red box here. So most of the time, all the vehicles uh, for junk are gonna have this red box in here. If you don't, I recommend you get one because it's a DOT uh, violation if you don't have it. So all those are, are passing. So we're gonna go ahead and pass that next one. Next thing you wanna look at is the horn and speedometer. So the horn, um, it works. Sometimes you get a vehicle where you have to have the vehicle in the on position for the horn to work. Uh, this one is not. So if it's not working, try and turn the vehicle in the on position and see if it will actually uh, honk the horn. So the horn's working. You don't necessarily need to check the speedometer for working. Um, obviously when you're driving the truck after you do your inspection, uh, you can say something to your ops team to let everybody else know. But uh, as of right now, it's hard to, to check it when the truck's not moving. You know? Um, makes sense. So we're going to go ahead and pass that for now. Um, one of the things we want to, next things we want to check is the battery cover is there and it's secure. Um, so let's go outside here and we're going to go to the other side of the vehicle. Make sure that the battery box is secured. Oh, looky here. It wasn't secured all the way. <gasps> want to make sure that it's secured on there. Um, that is also a DOT fail. If you don't have the battery box cover on these things, it is a DOT fail. Um, usually, especially here in Kansas, uh, I know that uh, we have to go through a lot of these 
Um, one of the things that these boxes are not the best design. So one of the things that we like to do here in Kansas City is sometimes we get a bungee cord and attach it from over here and to over here so this does not go flying away or have any issues. So um, it's there, it's good, uh, we can see that um, and we're gonna go ahead and pass it on there. The next thing that we need to look into is paperwork and safety equipment. So obviously paperwork, we already checked our safety equipment, um, but paperwork's gonna be in the, our Kansas City trucks are here in the passenger side toolbox. They're gonna have a board like this and it's gonna have three pieces of paper in it. Those three pieces of paper are gonna be your DOT inspection. Um, whatever uh, yours is, looks like, ours looks like one of these here, and it has a date on here, 52120. So you have a year from when it was done to get it done again. You have your insurance card. Obviously checking the date, this one expires 224 of 21. All of you should have updated uh, insurance information. And then your registration. Here in Kansas, this one doesn't expire till uh, 12 31 20 so at the end of the year I think where, where the rest of them expire as well um, any warning lights on the dash um, ours here it says uh, ABS or brake light only uh, no check engine so the ABS light is your analog brake system um, and the brake light it, that comes on um, if, if those were to come on that's when you absolutely need to know or need to let fail it or let ops know to let let one of us know or your team members know uh, so we can get that thing fixed if there's a check engine light on and it doesn't have a power down symbol on it that is okay um, a lot of these trucks will end up having a check engine light but it's not going to be detrimental to your truck um, i know that a lot of people don't necessarily like uh, having a check engine light but i assure you a lot of these are due to O2 sensors and things that don't necessarily do uh, harm to our truck and that will end up fixing over and over and over. Um, so we tend to not worry about those. Uh, so if it does have a check engine light, um, it's good to let somebody know, um, but we don't necessarily have to worry about the actual check engine light unless it's blinking or it has a power down or a, a, a down arrow symbol on it. So we're gonna go ahead and pass this one because I can show you guys it does not have any check engine lights, I believe. Oh, yep, it's off. There's no check engine lights. So you can see there's none on here. So we're gonna go ahead and pass that. And it also, it does say here that all switches and warning lights operate correctly. Um, there's nothing in here that I can see that doesn't operate correctly. So and I'm not gonna make you guys go through every switch and make sure that everyone's working. Um, so as, if you guys notice something, again, tell ops, let ops know, let us know. Uh, otherwise, if you already know of something, fail it, let us know, write a note in there. So we're gonna go ahead and pass this one. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna enter the odometer reading. It's very important that you guys put the right odometer reading because we're gonna start taking this information and putting it into our own, own application, our own software system for fleet management. Um, this one's got 38,000 204 miles. I'm going to put 38,204 miles and you I know it's miles because it says miles right after and it says ODO that's odometer. You hit it again sometimes it has trip on it and that trip will cause you guys to have skewed uh, odometer readings and it won't be correct so we want to make sure it is on ODO and that we have the right odometer reading and this one's 38,204. So we're going to enter that my driver name, I'm gonna put my name in there, Marcus Newman. And it's gonna ask me for a driver's license and medical cert card certificate. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that my driver's license out, which is horrible looking, um, and my medical card, my DOT medical card. So, and I'm going to take a picture of them both. So we know who's driving that truck that day use that. Next thing I like to have you guys do uh, is go ahead and take a picture of the license plate. Um, a lot of times here in Kansas City we have plates that fall off um, and we get new plates done so or new plates and they're uh, a different number or, and so we want to make sure that uh, we uh, know what license plate is on what. So here recently I had the guys take a picture of the license plate so I know what truck has what license plate. 
use the photo, press OK. Um, one of the last things, uh, number 15, is to make sure there's a broom and shovel in your toolbox. Oh, and this one's got a broom and a shovel. So we've got both the things that we need there, and we're going to go ahead and pass it. And the last thing, here recently, oh, excuse me, here recently, we have been ha having to do is uh, make sure that our trucks are sanitized. Um, one of the things I put on here is the last thing is make sure the steering wheel and the gear shift is wiped down and sanitized. Um, and then also dashboard and console wiped down and sanitized and door handles and armrests are wiped down and sanitized. So basically just make sure that the truck's clean for the next person to go in. Obviously with everything going on with the pandemic and COVID-19, uh, we wanna make sure everybody's safe and, and good to go when they're on the road and when they're working. So that's all you guys gotta do. Should only take you guys about 10 minutes in the morning tops. If you guys have any other issues or problems, suggestions, anything like that that you wanna add to take off of this, be more than happy to uh, accommodate. And that's how you whip around.